Sodak Genius. says, uh, so are we dropping Clemens to the bottom of the depth chart or uh -huh. what? We were talking yesterday, like, could he be, like, if there was one surprise cut on the roster, who could it be? And, like, because of the depth on the defensive line, I would say Clemens would be a shocker for me, but I couldn't really think of any other players that would also fall in that same, like, uh, surprise factor for me. Uh, Matt, any thoughts on a surprise cut? Now, I'm not a um, a soccer guy, but there's a great meme of a coach who says, I prefer not to speak. If I speak, I'm in big trouble, in big trouble, and I don't want to be in big trouble. That That's 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 me uh, on this one. It, it, I, 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 smirk and, I smirk and shrug. Um, I, do, I, do I think Michael Clemens should be on the second wave of the rotation? No, I don't. I think I, I like what I've seen at attack McKinley more than Michael Clemens this pre preseason and training camp. Um, I've liked what I've seen from Brain McGregor too. Um, I would say more, but I think the coaching staff really likes Michael Clemens. So I would be surprised if they did boot him. Um, I, I think that would classify it as a surprise because of how much the staff values him. I mean, with Hassan Reddick out, he's essentially been the starter opposite of Jermaine Johnson. So going from that to you're on the bottom of the depth chart or off the roster would be a, a pretty big change of change of pace. Green Bean, any player that you would think is a surprise cut? Uh, and what are your thoughts on Clemens? I'm not as down on Clemens as other people. Um, you know, I, I see, you know, look, I don't think he's ever going to be, um, you know, Reddick or your Huff or any of those guys. I just don't think that's what we're going to see, but I think he's, he's solid. And um, again, they did that whole experiment with him last year and all that shit. So I'm not down again. I don't want to get into it all again, but I think he could very easily replicate uh, JFM's output. Uh, my problem with Clemens is the ability for people to get into his head. And teams will do that. Like, that'll be the plan. Just rattle that guy. He'll make mistakes. He'll get penalties. He'll think with anger. And he'll, and he'll you know, you can easily frazzle people that are angry. That's my concern with him. But I also agree with Matt. Like, the, the young guy, you know, McGregor. And then you got Tack McKinley. You have uh, Will McDonald. Like, it's real hard for me to justify. Like, look, I, I brought up in my podcast this week. There was a, it, it happens often, but there was one really glaring example for me, which was years ago. I think it was like the early 2000s. We had Atari Bigby on our squad and he was a back end of the roster guy and he was trying to make the team. And all he did all preseason was make plays. And like he would, he would get a pick this game and four tackles. And then he did this, the, the last preseason game of the year, he had two picks ran one back like 60 yards. It was like, he was everywhere. And it was like, you can't cut this guy. But we we were like married to the guys we already liked or we drafted or whatever. And we cut him and he went to the Packers and had a great career. And I just hate to see. And then like for, for a guy who was fine for a couple of years, you know, and I see Clemens as one, like I like him, I think more than, than some Jets fans, uh, probably a little more than, than maybe Matt. But I don't want to cut a guy like a Braden McGregor. Like, if you're down to that, like Tack McKinley, who's done nothing but make plays uh, all, you know, all training camp, all preseason, I'd hate to cut a guy like that because you like Clemens and then you lose the, the, the really high upside that some of these guys bring. So... I don't know. I think Clemens is is in that mix. I mean, Obrick came out. He see, he he seems to think he's doing a a, a bang up job. Obrick sings his praises, so I think it's a long shot. But I'll tell you what. I think probably the guy that I see as you know somebody who was on the roster last year that's really in danger of being cut, and that's Jason Brownlee. I think he's a, he had two drops this game. Um, and uh, hasn't really done much. He did have the touchdown week one, which was really nice. Great catch, you know, got his feet in. It, was, it wasn't an easy catch. But by and large, he, he hasn't done much. And you got a guy like Brandon Smith, 
who's catching contested catches, you know, ball, he's catching balls in traffic. He's streaking down the field. He's diving for ball, like over the shoulder stuff. He's all he does is catch the ball, whether it's an underneath thing, if it's down the field, how do you cut a guy like that for Jason Brownlee? I just, I just don't see it. So I think Jason Brownlee would probably be the guy that I say is really in the most danger. If we're talking about guys that were, that were on the roster last year and are in danger of being, uh, supplanted this year. What's up, guys? Matt O'Leary from Talking Jets. If you liked that video, please make sure to subscribe and follow for more New York Jets content.